Well, welcome back. Today we're in a beautiful location here in the English countryside and we're going to be looking at camera settings for panoramic photography. First of all, um, tripod. Um, a tripod is um, helpful, it's not essential. Um, you can actually stitch uh, panoramic photographs from handheld pictures these days. The software is very, very good. Uh, but I think a tripod is a big help uh, if you're planning on doing a lot of this sort of stuff. Um, another thing that's quite useful is a little uh, spirit level for the top of your camera. I use one of these whether I'm doing panoramics or not. I think it's a handy little reference to use for making sure your horizontal uh, are nice and straight on, on the horizon. Okay, regards to camera settings, don't, don't worry, I'm going to put the uh, key facts for these on the video uh, after we've spoken about them, so you can obviously pause the video and write them down. Um, uh, exposure wise I'd say uh, set your exposure on manual or aperture priority you don't want to be uh, changing the aperture on any of the shots so you need to pick out your aperture let's say it's f16 and you shoot on f16 for all the frames you can change the shutter speed uh, if you want that's not a problem and you probably will need to do that depending on how many pictures you uh, shoot and uh, the weather conditions which I'll go into in a minute um, Focusing, always put the focus on manual, uh, not auto, because again, you don't want the focus to change as you're moving along the different frames. So uh, that's another manual setting, and uh, color balance, uh, I would leave that on daylight. In terms of lenses, um, you can use pretty much what you want, but I would advise you not to shoot on very wide-angle lenses. The reason being, uh, wide-angle lenses tend to get a lot of distortion towards the edges, and that can be a little bit more difficult to uh, stitch in the stitching software. Um, I personally prefer to shoot between 35 and 70 mil. Um, I don't like getting any wider than that, but. Um, if you want to try it and see how you get on, but uh, my advice would be to stick uh, no wider than 35 millimeters. As for the actual shooting process, you can do panoramics in different different ways. Um, I used to shoot quite a lot with the camera set uh, in a horizontal landscape format and just rotate the lens across and then just shoot rotate and shoot that gives you a very wide shot and but they're also very narrow shot um, which is fine for some applications but you might find it's a little bit too uh, too uh, narrow for your liking so the way around that um, is just to adjust the camera and just shoot on a vertical axis like so now that means you're going to get a, a, a still, obviously you can still shoot a very wide shot, but you're getting a bit more width on the picture. It does mean, however, you've got to shoot quite a few more frames to get the width you want. But um, that's the way we're going to shoot today. We're going to, going to give that a go. And um, I think it just gives you that little bit more flexibility. Another thing we need to consider before we start shooting is uh, to look at the scene and look at the lighting in the scene. We may start off shooting this side of the image um, and it could be a, a rising sunset, uh, sunrise or, or the sun setting and it may well be a lot brighter this side than it is right over, over here. So you need to do one or two things. You need to take some test exposures right away across the scene and average them out or better still, I think, is to just to take a few different exposures. Uh, so bridge exposures do maybe one or two lighter and maybe one darker or two darker. So you've got a selection of exposures and just do that. And then at least then when you get back to home or your studio, you can make a much better informed decision of uh, the exposure, obviously on the computer, than perhaps you can out in the field. So um, that's something to consider.
Right, we're back in the studio now. Um, I've uh, opened up my images. I've converted them to Adobe DNG format, which if you view my video I did a, a week or so ago on uh, workflow and archiving, you'll know why I do that. Um, so they're all converted. I haven't really made that much of adjustments to these. It's just a little bit of uh, tonal adjustments, but nothing major. Um, and uh, there's the four that we're going to stitch together. Now, I just want to show you about the overlapping. I mentioned in the video, you need to overlap these images is each frame so as you're shooting uh, each frame you need to keep an eye here on the edges and in the next one you need to allow uh, uh, a little bit of overlap probably about 15 or 20 percent overlap and I'll probably best demonstrate on this uh, mock-up here uh, these are two frames uh, from our shoot uh, just go back and uh, I'm just going to drop down the opacity on this one so Towards the edge of the frame, you'll notice, if I drag this one across, you can see the overlap I allowed on this picture around that much. So that's what you need to be aiming at. You need to be aiming about 15 or 20 percent, as I said. Uh, and what that does, it just enables the um, the software uh, enough uh, overlap to, uh, to join up the images uh, successfully. Right, we're using Photoshop per CS3, and our next job uh, here is to basically stitch these together. So, first thing we do is select all the images, go to Tools, go to Photoshop, and we go to Photo Merge. And that brings up uh, the box here. Um, pretty simple, I just leave mine on auto. I find that gives me the best results for the sort of images I want to do. We're not looking to do anything fancy here, no three sixes or anything, just a uh, panoramic. We just want these stitched together. Uh, so there's our images loaded, and we just click OK, and we just allow that to uh, work its magic. Okay, so Photoshop has now finished stitching the image, and here it is. Uh, it does look like the dog's chewed it, I'll admit, but uh, that's the way these things tend to come out of the uh, Photo Merge software. So we can obviously go in and uh, crop this down, but uh, first of all, let's just take a quick look and see if there's any uh, any bits of uh, any problems uh, we need to address. Um, on this image, so there's the uh, there's a stitching line. So what I tend to do is turn these off and zoom in. And uh, go along and just check the lines and make sure nothing's uh, out of alignment. And that all looks pretty good on that seam. So we'll go along a bit more to the next one. And that all looks pretty good as well. Just zoom in a bit further. So it's made a very good job of that. And then finally, this one. Like so. Well, I was hoping to might be able to sort of go into this and uh, show you how to address any problems, but uh, we've done such a good job with the camera setup. But it seems that it's stitched this uh, perfectly. I can't find uh, can't find any problems with it. So there we go. So it just shows you that uh, you know a bit of forethought uh, with the camera setup can save you uh, quite a bit of retouching. So, seeing we've uh, done such a good job on the stitching of this, and we don't need to go in and do any uh, retouching, we can now just crop this image down and get rid of all these uh, doggy uh, edges that uh, are causing uh, us to be distracted. Uh, so we just crop the image down, get right to the edges, and that'll get rid of all the uh, all those horrible bits. Um, what I will point out, um, I shot this on a 16.7 megapixel camera, a 1DS Mark II Canon, and uh, I work in 16 bits, so that's not going to uh, help the file size very much. Um, but I've ended up with a document size of 627 megabytes. So if you're shooting on a on a high resolution camera like this, and you start doing these panoramics. Just remember, you need you know a fair bit of RAM in the computer uh, to be able to process these. Um, otherwise, it's going to come to a grinding halt. So uh, something to bear in mind. I'll let this uh, process and crop down, and we'll come back. 
So there's the uh, finished uh, cropped image. Um, I may well crop this down a bit further, but uh, that's finished for now. We're going to go in now and just uh, flatten the image. We don't need all these layers because uh, we've got such a perfect uh, stitched document, uh, and that will preserve a bit of disk space and, and RAM on our system. So there it is. There's the finished uh, kind of raw picture. We still can now go take go on with this image and do some color correction and do some manipulations on it. But uh, that is the stitched image complete. Um, I'll put up on screen at the end of this video the key facts. I'll also put up a URL, so if you can't be bothered writing all those key facts down, you can download a PDF with them on to save you a little bit of hassle. So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me on the next video. Cheers!